Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Today we're going to show you how to use the Nikon 35Ti uh, point and shoot camera. It's a compact camera. This camera is probably the most complex I've ever seen or used. I'm going to do my best to try to describe all the functions, but there's a whole other uh, basic functions or hidden functions that are in the menu system. I highly recommend you check the manual if this video doesn't help you. But let's start off with, it's a 35 millimeter point and shoot camera. It uses 35 millimeter film. Uh, it can be side film, black and white film, color negative film, with multiple exposures, or in this case, a 12 exposure roll. These are not made anymore. And it uses a CR123A battery, which we have here. For that, we go to the bottom. We basically open that with a coin and this comes off. Then the positive side, the one with a little out uh, protruding thing uh, comes out and the plus sign goes downwards. Then we put this, uh, and this basically just turns the whole thing around. So we put it there, put the coin in the slot and lock it. Now you can see it's there. Once the battery is in, we can see some indications here and we can turn it on by turning the spindle here and you can see it. But let's go through a bit of what there is on the camera before we go into how to operate it. So on the front of the camera, we have a flash and a flash and no flash symbols and buttons. We have the flash here, we have the viewfinder, we have basically that sort of rangefinder uh, focusing system, uh, which is using, obviously it's not a rangefinder camera as per se, but it does use some sort of double beam. It has a little uh, AF window here and a light here. This is the lens cover. On the bottom we have the battery cover, the rewind button. This is basically if you wanna rewind mid roll, you can just press the button and it rewinds. Tripod uh, socket or screw and basically your strap here for your strap uh, to carry. This one actually has a broken strap lug. As you can see, there's no way to put a strap on this camera. Then we have the door to load film, which I'll show you later. And then we go to the back, we have the mode and the set. This is to change a bunch of functions, including date, viewfinder, panorama mode, which basically when you click it, it slides two little things that make panoramic instead of 35 uh, by 36 by 24 exposures. It does like a little panel. And then on the top, it looks super cool and it actually has a lot of functions. This is basically a viewing filter, like it basically illuminates. So it's a retro illumination system. So it gathers the light from where you're looking and shows you all the frame lines and all that stuff. If you cover it, it'll actually illuminate uh, red on its own. Then you have AF button, uh, self timer, and the light button, which means I can press it if it was on and you would see that light coming on here. Um, but not right now because there's a lot of light. Then we have the plus minus exposure compensation. And then this is the analog dial. On the left hand side, we have a, the distance as it focuses. So if I press, you see, that's very close by. If I focus a little further out, you see, a little further out, a little closer, closer. Then we have on the right, the aperture scale. 2.8 is the aperture. If I point to something dark, it's 2.8. But if I point to the lights, you'll see how it changes to 5.6. It's actually compensating depending on the light, the, side, the sources of the light are on the sides here. As you can see, it resets after a while. Then on the bottom, we have exposure compensation, which actually is right now set to zero, but you can go plus or minus. And then you have this top menu, which is a timer uh, counter, like a little clock. It has also LT, which is long time. And then you have self timer and rewind. So if we were pressing rewind, it would go to that arrow and rewind. So that is basically all there is and the on off uh, switch here. And this is the basically to navigate the little functions. So this is a P as in program, A as aperture priority and T as in time for long exposures. So let's start by loading a roll of film. We're gonna turn off the camera. We're gonna lift this little flap, turn this thing sideways and it pops, grab a roll of film, insert it into the um, film and then we extend it. When we extend it and pull it, we don't want to bulge a lot. So we have to be careful. This roll has a bit of um, a trend to bulge, but now we close it. And when we close it, there we go. We hear it, we push this down and it doesn't do anything. In this camera, even when we turn it on, it won't do anything. We have to depress a little bit. And there we are on frame one. So let's start with the functions. When we are on P, we can actually uh, basically just point and shoot. And it tells you how far it focuses and what aperture is using. We could also point and then do compensations, as you can see, by 
turning this wheel. And what that does is it reads the, the, the light it has in the scene and chooses the right aperture and shutter speed. But if there's possibilities to go up one stop or down one stop and it basically opens or closes the uh, aperture and changes the time, it will let you do it. So if we go here into the light and then we start, it just changes when I move. And if we have the light here and we can go, you see, we can go different ways as it lets us do faster shutter speeds and so on. So that's a way to do some compensation and you can choose and through the viewfinder, you're seeing the shutter speed, we can't see it here. So you can't see the aperture on the window, but you, on the viewfinder, but you can see the shutter speed and the other way around. You can see the aperture here, but not the shutter speed here. So it's a bit of a blend of both things. That is one of the ways. Then we can use exposure compensation. So that's a good one if there's something that's backlit. So we press here and we just go, as you can see, one way, that's to all the way to minus two. We can go back to zero and then we can go all the way to plus two. So that's a way to basically push or pull your film. Then as you saw, focus is here. So we're focusing here. We can change the AF by pushing the AF and we can go to one meter set and just shoot all the time here. Take a picture, one meter. If we want to reset the AF back to normal, so using, uh, using auto focus and not manual focus, we have to press the AF and take it all the way to, to the top top. And now it's ready. Now, as you can see, it does its own thing on its own. So that's how we reset it. Also for self timer, you basically have to hold this and turn it on the top little spindle. You see how the light illuminates for the viewfinder if it's dark. We press this and we can go all the way to self timer. So now when we press, it will blink as you can see here. And when it's ready to take a picture, it'll just take it. It's around 10 seconds to self timer and boom, there it goes. We can also go to self timer and if we don't want to go to self timer, just press it again and it goes back to normal. Okay. Self timer on or off. That's pretty cool if you ask me. So here we are back in normal mode. Nothing is there and it'll reset on its own. So we've done these three buttons. Then we have A, which is aperture priority. And now, like I said, there's a lot of other functions that I maybe I'm missing, but I just want to give you as much as possible on a video. So A is aperture priority. So basically you're here and now the camera's telling you 5.6 and you can say no, F4 or F2.8 or F8 and then you shoot and it does its thing with the AF and it does its calculations. So that's aperture priority. So we can shoot at a fixed aperture obviously within its limits. If it can't do uh, that limit, then it will tell you and probably won't let you take a picture. Then there's also stuff like too close focus, then the little blinks on the AF and things like that. There's also parallax on the viewfinder, which has view, like um, basically the window just goes a little closer because you're closer and stuff like that. And then we have T, which is timed, which what it means is I can press, take a picture, and you'll see this little top one be my second counter. We're taking a picture, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five, and then you when you stop, you press, and it stops, basically counting time. So that, as you saw, the T is basically for long exposures. We just take a picture, and it just starts counting those seconds. Um, then you have the frame counter here, and if there's different things that you can see on this viewfinder. But that's basically all there is to this camera. Let's finish the roll so you can see uh, what it does when it finishes the roll because I want to see how it rewinds and the noise it makes. Let's take another one. Oh, if there's flash, it takes forever to recharge because this battery is a little old. So we got another one. So yeah, basically to rewind, like I said, we can also press it here. And once we press it here, it rewinds. But as this roll, I want to keep it for something else. I'm going to open halfway and this film is going to be used for a different video, but you would wait all the way till the roll is all the way inside the canister and then you can develop it uh, at your lab. So yeah, basically that's how you use the can uh, Nikon 35 Ti. Like I said, this camera has a ton of functions. Oh wait, one I missed to say is if you want to use flash all the time, you basically just press the flash and it will, you got to press and hold. And then whenever you shoot, it will actually take a picture. 
And if you don't want to use flash by any chance, you press and hold the, the non-flash, and you can take pictures without flash. Oh wait, that was the flash version. So if you want to flash, you press here, and always flash. And the same thing goes this way. If we want to press the shoot against the light, we can press here and shoot. And it flashes. And also you can press this other button if you don't want flash. So let's go to the dark scene and press. And that's basically a non-flash. Then there's also red eye reduction, which you basically push up. And when you take a picture, it does this little light and then flashes. That's the red eye, red eye reduction for this camera. So yeah, basically it's a very, very, very <laughs> full of features. Never seen a point and shoot with more features than this one, to be honest, but it's really amazing. I love the analog interface here. It's easy to understand. And if you wanna see the panoramic mode, let me just open it so you can see. When I push this, it creates this, uh, let's say, cropped panorama on the 35 millimeter film. And then to pull it off, we just push it the other way around and that's about it. So yeah, that's how you do it. And it does read the DX code. So it will work with the DX code on your film um, there. And that's all you really need to know about this camera, turn it off. And that's about it. You do want to keep the flap down. So yeah, I hope this video helped you understand a bit more of the 35 Nikon Ti. It's full of features. I probably missed half of them, but I was just trying to help people that might get this camera and or want to use it. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll leave a link to the, uh, to the manual in the description. See you in the next one. Bye.